Hello YouTube viewers welcome to my show Rocket Mondays episode number 5 So today we're going to take a look into SpaceX so let's get started So what is it no very simple it's a small company started by Elon Musk and it was created in May 6 2002 So what do you have to know about it well it offers two primary service human rated cargo and falcon series of rockets basically falcon 1 falcon 5 falcon 9 falcon heavy falcon 1 and 5 are cancelled so or currently only functional rockets are falcon 9 and falcon heavy so let's uh, dive into it so this company started with uh, one man and one idea elon musk wanted to colonize mars and he went to lot of companies like uh, nasa and russian uh, agencies and he was rejected so at the end he was like okay screw this people i'm going to make my own space company that's how spacex was formed at the beginning it had very few people now it has almost 7000 so what are the good aspects of it it has very clear goal this is a very priceless in a terms of corporation if you have a very clear goal what you want to do everything else becomes easy so their goal is colonizing mars that's like their very simple goal like it's created by a guy and it's like okay i, I have to do this mars is a star so the whole company is rotates around that single fact now it's very cost driven so what does that mean since it uh, it's not like you know uh, politicians are giving it money so it has to deliver like it provides launch uh, in using falcon 9 so other companies will be like okay we will hire you for 70 million dollar and you will put up my satellite into orbit here's the deal the sole reason uh, falcon 9 is only 70 million instead of 400 million that generally united launch alliance american company costs is uh, because it's cost driven there is no government uh, pay fixed payment like which ula has ula is like already booked for like you know 10 20 years ahead like this is a private company it has to earn that reputation now how did they manage that very simply it's uh, they removed all the middlemen like as many middlemen as they can remove they had all the products go into one factory make rocket entirely there that's all they did like in my video why nasa sucks i mentioned that nasa is spread around all, everywhere this is invert of that everything is concentrated in one place and they are very quick and agile so as you can see this is the falcon 1 this is what propelled them into actual space and uh, first th uh, three blew up and fourth one succeeded so suffice to say they went from that to designing falcon 5 and they cancelled it because they were like falcon 9 is far more practical like in terms of uh, launch capabilities so they are very quick to agile like uh, if they find something works they will stick to it if it doesn't work they will cancel it like they do not make the mistake that nasa did with space shuttle so they, their agility really does help them cut cost and they have very low to no politics now what i mean by politics as you can see many companies are publicly owned basically stockholders play a very crucial role and uh, you can't avoid politics in space because it's a well you have to get license to launch into it so it's not like you can anyone can build a rocket anyone can launch a payload but unless you want to get killed by police you want to make sure that you have licenses for that so it has very little politics involved into it so these are the good so what is their company's future as i already told like um, Mars does not pay you back like you go to Mars Mars is not going to pay you it's pointless and uh, they are subject to outside forces which uh, i will uh, look into in the bad aspect and uh, currently they are very 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 low profitability so think of it this way elon musk uh, famously joked like you know to make a small fortune in space you have to start with a big fortune and he wasn't joking so space is flat out uh, losing money the sole reason ula and all that they are succeeding is because they have i already mentioned pre locked agreement so so they are playing uh, two big gambles now the one big gamble we all know bfr now it's a big ass rocket and it's literally called big falcon rocket and if it works it will allow mars colonization hopefully now even if it did that here's the problem bfr has the issue that nobody is going to pay for it unless nasa comes forward and like okay we're going to buy this product uh, they are kind of screwed so that is their first line second line is starlink now this is the golden goose like if they can get this working 
they're gonna be so rich that Google will start to look like a children throwing tantrums kind of like you know they will start making that much money so what is it it's a satellite constellation that will provide internet now you might be like okay would that work uh, traditionally no because all the satellites were kept at very high orbit which are generally classified as geostationary what does that mean simply like this is your surface satellite would be on top of you benefit you can have like three to four satellite and it will cover a large area side effect a, it's so far there would be a lot of ping like 300 to 400 millisecond uh, doing video call like that would be self laggy not because you might not have the bandwidth it's simply because it physically takes that long back and forth and it's not like it only goes to the satellite it has to go to one satellite then to the ground station then from ground station to the satellite then again to you so ping is quite uh, huge let's just say that so what they are trying to do is put satellites in low earth orbit basically below 1000 kilometers per hour uh, height algebra basically almost at the same orbit as international space station and they want to put a lot of satellite now in low orbit you can't uh, be stationary you, the stationary orbit is geostationary if you go close you will be orbiting very quickly you will be orbiting as quickly as 22 minutes or 30 minutes so you need a lot of satellites to give a full coverage so their original plan is around 4000 satellites to give a complete constellation and if they work out they're gonna revolutionize internet uh, permanently and if it works out even with one to two percent of market uh, capture of whole planet because it's an international service uh, they will be talking about 30 billion dollar so yeah they, they're big like if this works out they're gonna be rich and this is the sole reason why they want to make sure the falcon series rockets are quickly reusable they have to launch four to five thousand satellites so they want to make sure the rockets are cheap so we looked at the good we looked at the future let's look at the bad now it's overhyped beyond belief i have no idea how the heck that happened now it's generally a case with elon musk like things get overhyped beyond belief so i will look into it uh, more detailly so and it's always behind schedule everything they uh, designed is always behind schedule from the original launches to uh, falcon heavy supposed to be launched in 2013 and five year five year delay the starlink project supposed to have the early testing at uh, 2016 that was two years delay. and falcon heavy uh, he already almost went to start selling the tickets that you wanna buy a falcon heavy and it's gonna ferry you around the moon no landing but ferry around the moon yeah uh, and it was cancelled so you have to understand it's overhyped beyond belief like even if he comes up and says retard things like you know you're gonna do a rocket to you know travel on the planet and nobody bats an eye is like dude that's a icbm trajectory that trajectory is so high acceleration that people are gonna die inside and icbm can do that because well it doesn't have to slow down so Suff uh, suffice to say uh, there are some people with intelligence like uh, thunderfoot on youtube but uh, it gets overhyped beyond belief now one thing you have to understand it runs on nasa's money it's not a privately funded company i'm mean, like it is but it's not completely it's not like apple where you know apple is like okay they sell a product if the product uh, works then only they get the money back no uh, nasa is giving them small small amount of money now small as in government small like it's millions of dollars uh, in order to ensure that they have what's called uh, commercial uh, resupply missions cr uh, crm commercial resupply missions basically which uh, which is the most profitable for uh, spacex basically nasa is paying them money so they can create the dragon capsule that goes to international space station and re uh, refuels it basically uh, in terms of food supplies scientific research and all that so it's not 100 percent independent so, and uh, this is kind of a big uh, risk factor like let's say they made a bfr but nasa has to buy it uh, Elon Musk cannot launch the BFR even if he makes it he cannot launch it he does not have any technology other than the rocket itself that's why I said the company has only two products the Falcon series rockets and the Dragon capsule they have nothing else they don't have rovers they don't have the habitat technology nothing so this is a very crucial point like let's say in future we have a let's say economic crash and all the Mars projects are halted here still the BFR will be a just a fancy money waste so you have to understand uh, it's not independent so you can't have spacex versus nasa now nasa i already mentioned in my episode of why nasa sucks it's politics and well politics and budget now they also screw over the budget 
and uh, they are also behind schedule but due to the lack of politics they work quite well so so i hope you like my presentation thanks for watching i hope you liked it or learned from it in that case please like if you didn't please dislike leave a comment and subscribe press the bell icon i upload a video every day so thanks for watching